Hola amigos, bonjour mes amis, hello, konnichiwa, hello everybody, it's Maxi and welcome back to Life is Strange 2, episode 2, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but this is Life is Strange 2, episode 2, we're going to continue, I think it set us back like a few seconds, but we're, we're good. It's just sent us back to this point, so I think we're okay. Watch out for the pack. The pack? What are you on about? Alright, I don't... Oh, yeah, because we were looking at a... Uh... We've got to go look at this tree house. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe our grandparents live right next to Captain Come Spirit. On. Like, that's insane. We've been like, look at that. So that's the treehouse Stephen helped out with. That's the treehouse that he fell from. Pretty Captain awesome. Spirit. I mean. So dangerous. <laughs> Alright, let's go in the shed. Oh. Yeah? This is uh, Captain Spirit. <gasps> oh. My. God. Captain Spirit doesn't have powers. Daniel saved him! I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but we live right next door, right? W Daniel sees, I can't remember the kid's actual name, but Captain Spirit, the guy who pretends he has superpowers, the little kid who pretends he has superpowers the whole time, and then falls out of the treehouse and starts floating. Daniel saved him. He doesn't... What if he doesn't have powers at all? Daniel saved him. Oh. My. God. And then that's all at how it connects. That is... Insane. Like, what? I mean... I was kind of hoping he would have powers, but like... I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Daniel saves him. Oh. Is that going to be now? Like, is that about to happen? Like, what is going on? <clears throat> Can't believe it's already been a week since we got here. A week, blimey. Let's open this. <sighs> Get ready for storage wars. <gasps> What's wrong? <sighs> Frozen shut. Of course. Well, that's not good. <gasps> there it is! Sean, look! There's the kid! Oh my god, it's about to happen! Yen! That was good. Daniel saved him. Why is Sean looking at him cross? Now the kid thinks he has powers, but like... Hi. H how you doing? Did you see that? We did. Yeah. yeah. We did. It looks like you're okay though. You were almost floating. I I was I was. I could feel myself in the air. It, it was awesome. That t-shirt is wicked. Who's your favorite superhero? I love Power Bear. Oh, they're making friends. Power Bear. You should check it out. Dude, that's so cool. Chris, oh god. Chris, that's his name. I am so sorry. Are you okay? Dad, I'm fine. I promise. Are you sure? Listen, I shouldn't. Do you know them? It's okay, Dad. We live next door. They're cool. He loves superheroes, even power Oh, bear. does the dad know who we are, though? Gotcha. Hey there. Are hey. you staying with the Reynolds? Yeah, they're our grandparents. Oh, uh, yeah. They're our grandparents. Oh, I see. Oh, jeez, Chris. You don't have any damn shoes on. I'm sorry, buddy. 
Let's get you inside. I... Uh, yeah. Okay, Dad. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, and, uh... If Claire asks, tell her everything is fine. Claire? Is it? Is it... Really? Uh, never mind. See you around. Sure. Wait, what does Claire have to do with that guy? Thanks, guys. See you later. Yes, we will. Unless it's somehow our half brother and something else crazy is going on there. Sorry, Sean. He was gonna fall. No, of course not. No. No, of course. He could have really hurt himself. I'm glad you saved him. Concede. Why are you mad, Sean? No, you... You did the right thing. But listen. Just be careful. We can't let anybody know. We have to keep a low profile out here. He's like my age. I bet you would have done the same exact thing. Don't be mad. I'm yeah. not mad, dude. It's... Just worried. I'm worried, okay? So, Daniel, remember that we're hiding out. So no training and no showing off your power. But From if on, someone needs saving, that's okay. All the time, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they made friends. That was so cute. What the hell does the dude, the, the alcoholic neglecting dad of the captain spirit kid have to do with claire i don't remember what actually happened in that captain spirit thing like i remember the power thing so i was right i mean i should have figured it that out sooner but hey i was right i was right what's this this is like a robot okay are we going over that house or are we in the shed we went to get some toys Beaver Creek, Oregon, the next morning. Oregon. Oregon. Er, or, Eric, or, what? Why can't I say it all of a sudden? Oregon? Oregon. It doesn't sound like a, a word anymore. I'm oh, at fuck. the neighbors. That kid never listens. <sighs> Alright. Well, I don't see why he can't go play. I mean, the dad doesn't know anything about it, so, you know. We're okay. okay. Time to get Daniel at the Ericsons. Although I can see this going pretty badly. Like I can see it going, going badly. Um, just a quick heads up. Uh, my nieces and nephews, no, my niece and my nephew are here. So if you hear shouting, like it's just the kids, uh, out in the sitting room. Just so you know, or my mum, <laughs> they're here too. She's here too. What? What am I on about? But yeah, that's like if you hear any shouting, I don't know if you can hear it, like what the, how soundproof this is to hear anything but me kind of deal, but yeah. <laughs> what the hell, Daniel? The first fucking rule. What is this kid running away from? And did his father see something? His dad upset him like really badly. I remember that. I just don't remember what happened exactly. I can't apparently go out here. Oh, I need clothes. Clothes are good. Get dressed. My dogs are all in here as well, so. They're like, there. On my bed, around my bed. Okay. I wonder if that door glitch is Claire? still going on. Steven. Oh, that's Anybody not the mum. That's not the mum, is it? That's Claire, right? The grandma. Tell Claire everything's well, fine. Okay, I get it now. Looks like I don't know mom. why I thought Claire was the mum. Okay. We're home alone. That doesn't bode well. Oh, right. right. Sunday, Sunday morning. morning. Claire and Steven must be at church. Ah, uh, no, the glitch has been fixed. I can't go through the wall anymore, or the door. That was funny, though. 
Okay, I can't look at anything in here apparently. Apparently there's nothing to look at. So. Uh, uh, your ass. Hmm. Who knows what Daniel's doing over there? Ah, oh, chill out. I'm sure he's just playing. I say that and then something horrendous will happen. I'll be like, why didn't I hurry? I want to look around. I don't think there's anything I can look at. I think it's just a case of go get your butt over to the other house. Oh no, I can look at the tree. We had a good time mm. decorating mm. the tree together last night. Oh, that's sweet. Tanny loved it. Do I need to go out the front door or the back door? Like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I can snoop. He's not in here. Mm -hmm. I, I could just could delete my browser, browser history after, after I'm done. Okay. Jeez. Steven went search so crazy, crazy on us. Okay. ART1. Seattle blast and shooting, an unresolved mystery, 11th, 10th, 2016. Art 2. Officer Tanaka holds press conference on the Seattle incident. The SPD will con still considering every lead, including terror attack and gang fight. 11th of the 4th, 2016. Article 3. More questions and answers in Seattle instances, friends and neighbours warn loss of local mechanic. 11th of the 2nd, 2016. These articles are almost a month old. Article 4. Where are the Diaz Maybe brothers? They stopped looking for us? 11th of the 1st, 2016. Article 5. I blacked out, says main witness of the Seattle blast after leaving hospital. 10th of the 31st, 2016. Art 16. Uh, article 6, sorry. Protests. Well, that was awkward. was awkward my uh, controller decided to die on me but uh we should be good now <laughs> oh or not okay i just hold it upside down we should be good come on uh article five at black tower article six Okay, it doesn't it doesn't seem to be charging so I need to go sort out my controller. Oh. I need to go sort out my controller, but I'll be right back. Bye for now guys. Alright, I'm back. Um let's continue, shall we? Sorry about that. Anyway. Um SPD to hold awareness workshops on racial bias. 11th of the 2nd, 2016. What the One hell more. is this? I had is no idea Stephen could fall for this bullshit conspiracy theories. Wait, does he believe anything of this? Hi, is anybody following the Seattle shooting incident? There's a lot of weird things going on that nobody can explain. One, how did the police officer really die? Two, why did this mysterious explosion come from? Three, how did the fugitive brothers get around? Four, why are the police being so secretive with details? Discuss. If you have any inside scoop, please post here. Skidoo68, I've been all over this. Go to fakeexplosion.url for the full story of this cover-up. The new power plant they want to build in this city is definitely part of this. Looks like they just trained the poor kids too. Damn, wouldn't that be a uh, easy help? GH Pimp, I saw that surveillance footage and there's no way that was a natural explosion. What is going on in Seattle? Maybe prepping for a false flag operation? Jill 101, I read that a motel owner saw the kids and that he said the kids blew up his toilet. What? We didn't blow up the toilet. Did we? Maybe. He did get kind of mad. Um, American Eye, did you see the news reports about the brothers at the gas station? Sounds sketchy. 
Madman, not everything is a conspiracy, you US wankers. <laughs> Hence to baby door. My friend's parents work for the Oregon PD and they say there's a big secret manhunt for the two brothers. I heard they might have been used for experiments and now they're on the run because the experiments worked and made them dangerous. I know there are experiments going on everywhere because I came from an experiment. Huh. Okay. So I looked down because I just felt like a breeze and I thought my door opened, but it was just shadow. It was my dog. It was my dog. So. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, check news. Jeez. What the hell is this? Alright. Uh, I have no idea Stephen could fall for this bullshit conspiracy theories. Log in? Holy shit. Who are these assholes? Wait. That's some fucked up hate speech. We shouldn't be on the internet. Alexa Stone, cop killer. You can run, but you can't hide. Corey Alexander Jr., this is what happened when you let cockroaches in the kitchen. Julie Strand, I saw your story in the news and my heart goes out to you boys, bless you. Christine Foley, shame on you, they are killers. Julie Strand, no, they are kids. Strong boy, I've got a point thirty eight bullet, bullet with you and your brother's name on it. Sleep tight, kids. Kerry Hapton, I know the family of the FC you killed. They're devastated. Alice Green, thoughts and prayers. American Citizens Coalition. No more sanctuary cities. Damn. What the hell is wrong with Lila? Derek Anderson. Maybe I should call her while there's nobody home. Thinking of you in these hard times. Be strong, Lila. Carla Hamilton. We miss you. Get well soon, XOXO. Alison Reigns. I hope you'd be back soon. We love you, girl. Spotted. Peacock High. Crow Carry much? Adam Barnes. The park sucks without you, so we're bringing your board over. Hey, in case Naomi Suarez. Hey, in case you didn't get my text, I got all your history notes covers. Hope to see you soon. Well, they're like hope to see you soon. So maybe she's just got a virus or something. Like, it doesn't sound super serious. It could be, but like, be strong. Maybe something happens. But like, if we call her, to check on her, that's not a good idea. We can't really. Visit Brody's I'm blog. Brody. If we ever make it home. On the Edge by Brody Holloway. Oh, Brody. You'll be much, much welcome. November 7th, 2016. Salt Lake City, Utah. This dispatch on off road is a tribute to a couple of new young friends I made on a recent adventure that I've yet to transcribe. Or even fully processed yet. I'll leave the details vague to protect the innocent because believe me, they are not guilty. Aw, but let me digress. The best part about being a freshman traveller, meaning I sometimes make gas money off these dispatches, is the people you meet on the proverbial road. Of course, the worst part about being a professional traveller is the people you meet on the actual road. I've been too lucky for a variety of reasons. Though I've had moments of pant-shitting fear from the highway patrol following me at night to that weird motherfucker I picked up in Iowa who wouldn't leave the car, read that awful account here, ultimately I approach strangers as potential friends, if not allies. I'm that naive and stupid that the universe feels sorry for me and lets me escape by as I help people on instinct rather than objectively. First thought, best thought. I still hear my ex-brother, his choice telling me years ago that you read all this Kerouac crap about life on the road but you can't even change a tyre, asshole. He was right, so I learned how to change a tyre. I'm not good at it, so I always have a towing insurance. I also have towing insurance. End of dilemma. However, I can't always give my own version of roadside assistance, including to my young compañeros who needed it the most. <laughs> I wish I could have done more for them, maybe even joined their quest. Because it's a more important journey than mine. Instead of just picking, pushing a rock up a hill, I could have helped them move mountains out of the way. If we were hanging out again, I would ask them to forgive me for not coming along to offer whatever help I could. Brody, you're going to make me cry again! You've done so much already! Then again, I'm kind of clumsy, a clumsy dork, and I could have fucked shit up by trying to play a saviour. Ah, the paralysis of analysis. My suspicion is that they didn't really need me in the end. Just each other. You have helped so much and I am off. Like, you gave us money. You gave us a hotel, uh, camping gear. You took us away. You asked no questions about these complete strangers and you helped us. <sighs> oh, so I continue to weave this highway and roadside tapestry always playing it forward. 
call it guilt if you want. I'm still that guilty, uh, geeky, sincere kid who looked up to anybody who wanted to change the world for good, who wanted to move mountains for others. I always wanted to be a car bound, Lois Lane, a roving reporter getting in the face of the corrupt matrix. Sure, my adult cynic knows the system is rigged, but that was screwed and that justice is often just a joke. But when I saw the faces of my wandering friends who went through hell and are still there for all I know, smiling with childlike gratitude at my most truly of trivial of gifts, I felt ashamed, sad. There are times when I encounter a little lost soul lost and they flash that wide-eyed, grateful, frightened stare and you feel your heart break into a million pieces. <laughs> now I think of all those children out there alone in the night, on the precipice, the razor's edge of America and beyond, wanting only the most basic of life's needs like food and parents. It makes me cry and sick at once. Then I rage, rage against the dying of the light and vow to do my part. That's the better to, but I'm sorry. <sighs> oh my god, this this guy is amazing. I said it before, I'll keep saying it. Like This guy is like a saint, he's like an angel. Oh my god. He's a guardian angel. He's he's amazing. Like he's so selfless and sweet and helping everybody and he just wants to help and it's so sweet. <sighs> it's the benefit of an activist on wheels. I always like to think of myself as moving forward like a friendly shark. Otherwise we don't eat, we don't su survive. Now I find myself thinking of the past, wondering if I gave the best advice to those in need. If I even help these those lost children of the American night by leaving them on their own. Then I realise that I'm the one who's actually lost out here. My friends climbing the hills know exactly where they're going. And I know they're going to make it home. I'd like to plan a visit. Aww. Wow. This article is much less creepy than it seemed back then. The nude age. The sky is almost a perfect blue cliché as I pull my weary gas beast off the winding Highway 5 into the main vein of Rockville Springs, Wyoming, and at Community Height Pop 472, Popularity 472, this is a stark barren land before time like any other sleepy town born from the local mine shafts that fed the community. Along with the robber who barons who owned the oil, the citizens suffered their fair share of tragedy over the decades, but managed to retain a healthy... excuse me. Main Street with a few thriving shops and services, but by the end of the oil-starred 1970s, the once sleepy town was in a coma after the last drops of the precious earth blood had been mined. The company quietly closed shop and left the town and populace to their own devices, which meant most people packed up, closed shop, and left forever. Which brings me today to Rockville Springs, Wyoming, population 51. Inhabited. Wow, a lot less people. Inhabited by ghosts who stay behind haunt what was left of the town, discarded their white sheets and are now stark naked. There was always an eccentric Lynchian? I don't know what that word is, I'm sorry. Aura over Rockfield Springs as demonstrated by their very own nudist community who'd been quietly amassing ever since the 1950s after the local oil first crashed from the earth. The town wasn't as religious or conservative as others in the representative era, so the thought of nude volleyball didn't cause a legal scandal. How could it when the city's own mayor was seen or unseen, <laughs> sunbathing in his birthday suit? So therefore nobody gave a rat's ass even though they could see any everybody's ass. When the majority of the town was abandoned, the news community saw that this was their chance to pursue the end goal of their lifelong dream, a naked public sphere free of moral judgement. Cumber under some misguided public and political attacks for that a u l turn? I don't know. Natural- oh, for their all natural lifestyles. Should have read the next word, I was like- <laughs> Thanks to smug radio media reports, curious visitors now drive through the depleted main street not to get a cup of the damn fine pine coffee at Raw Cafe, Tom and Brody sent you, but to giggle and take selfies with the new townspeople as their background props. It's rather gross to witness as I did in my brief drive through report, yet there is no doubt some members of the town welcome the tourists because they spend money. There's that old expression, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Ironically, I'd heard that about Rockville Springs in my travels and vowed to stop there someday. 
if I need to satisfy my need to see a 56 year old naked man change the oil in my car then I had a boring epiphany how do you talk to a naked person I found out you just talk you don't forget that they're not wearing clothes but you actually end up being embarrassed that you are you don't forget that oh the people I saw and chatted up didn't even have any particularly <coughs> unique insights into the world of or geopolitics as the mechanic told me I give them taxes don't ask me to vote for the bastards too <laughs> ironically some tended to be quite conservative they just wanted to not pay taxes without clothes others seemed to stay out of sight with the crowds around which makes the recent media circus more insulting since the tone of the reports is always the tone of the reports is always a condescending Ooh, look it. The funny people were sagging flesh, cooking eggs, and jogging down the road. And full disclosure, I admit that the former Brady would have been one of those same judgmental assholes. Glad I'm not him anymore. Okay, take a deep breath, my dude. I'm not saying this mild condemn con condemnation is a great threat to liberty. We obviously take have worse going on in this big country. That's always a revealing microcosm of how we treat each other and all that naked hip hypocrisy. Okay. Well then. Ah, uh, let's go, I guess. Well, I guess they won't be back for at least two hours. Morning, sleepyheads. We'd let you sleep in today while we're at church. Back by noon for lunch. See you in a bit. Love, Grandma and Grandpa. P.S. The Christmas tree is perfect. Good job, kids. P.S.S. Thank you for tidying up a bit. You are welcome. Leave. Okay, let's, let's get, get this brack back, back home now. Yeah. Have a little look around my yard. Merry Christmas, everyone. <sighs> Why does Daniel never listen? Maybe I'm too soft with him. Maybe, I don't know. Kids, eh? <laughs> He's just playing. Steven it's not that bad. Steven and gonna freak if they realize he wants to be Eric's. Yeah, that's the rule. Don't go, isn't it? Mm. Right, uh, I'm out of time. So, I'm going to have to leave this episode here. But, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I'll be back with some more Life is Strange too soon. So, I'll see y'all then. But, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Megsy, signing off.